hey you guys i'm back so i just wanted to talk about um why i don't think that i have bipolar disorder although who knows what that may be or if that's true or not sorry i'm messing with my hair now because i just am <laughs> but why do i not think that i have bipolar disorder um, bipolar 1 I should say I think that I don't have bipolar 1 because my doctor only met with me four times within the 11 days that I was at the hospital um, so in those 11 days I met with him four times and the four times that I met with him we only talked for about 10 minutes so I don't feel like in 40 minutes in total, you would get a very good and accurate diagnosis of me, especially like when I gave what I thought, you know, was going on with me and it was quickly dismissed. It seemed like my doctor already had his mind made up on what I was experiencing and how I was affected by what I was experiencing. So he just said, oh, you know, you're bipolar with psychotic features. That's what it is, manic and psychotic features, which I don't believe that that's the case. Um, and then from what I've heard, I believe that I have ADHD which people also don't realize how that affects women because it is less studied and whatnot. A lot of women who have ADHD end up self-diagnosing because doctors, like doctors will be like, you know, I don't think you have that, you have this. And they'll treat the symptoms of the actual problem because they're thinking that that's the main problem, but they're actually symptoms of ADHD. So that's why I feel like, I'm sorry, I really don't know where I'm looking. I'm probably looking over there and the camera's over here. And I know that might be annoying to some people, but it, I really, that's just how I talk. I don't even look people in the eyes sometimes when I talk to them because my brain just be going and going and going. Like I think faster than I can speak. <laughs> which is also why I think I have ADHD point of the matter is he diagnosed me with bipolar 1 cool whatever um, I don't like the medicine that they're giving me I feel like all of it makes me sleepy it even says this medicine may cause blurred vision may cause drowsiness and dizziness alcohol may make this work worse use care when operating a vehicle vessel or dangerous machines um yeah every single one that i have says that i'm taking trazodone i think for sleep i'm taking gabapentin for anxiety as needed and then i'm taking seroquel for that's twice a day, so I think I'm taking Seroquel for mood. But I don't like how it makes me feel. It makes me feel like, eh. Oh, I forgot. I have to tell you guys about the spiritual experiences. I don't know if they're spiritual, but I'm gonna label it as that. The experiences that I had in the hospital. So, um. I ran into some weird, some characters. I feel like God had me ministering to people, low key. And I feel like God also revealed parts of my purpose within being in the hospital. So it took about three or four days to get me stabilized enough to function on my own. And then they had a schedule that we had to follow and all types of stuff like um and groups we did a lot of groups um talking about our problems or talking about how to function like normal 
autonomous human beings or whatever. I'm sorry I keep drinking this, but it's good. I met some weird people. So, uh, I met this guy. And what's crazy is this guy reminds me of someone that I met last year. Well, yeah, I met them last year, but this person kind of is okay i'm just gonna describe him this person and then i'm going to describe the person that i met while i was in the hospital that kind of reminds me of this person and they even almost look exactly alike except one of them is like significantly older so that's why i felt like it's a spirit thing but anyway, so um, the person that I met personally there, they consider themselves to be like an alpha male and, you know, they follow that MGTOW thing, men going their own way. I don't know much about it because I don't listen to that type of stuff, but I like to listen to stuff that's edifying. But, you know, some people listen to stuff that tickles their ears or makes them want to destroy the world i don't know point of the matter is um he was like a MGTOW man alpha man um i felt like there was like a weird like love hate towards me where it was like i like you because i feel like you're attractive to me but i also don't like you because i feel like you talk like a white girl and you don't understand life and you're naive because whatever you know everybody thinks i'm naive because and i may be in some senses but that's just like that's the innocence of the lord on my life don't be trying to like make me because i've done I've, I've done some things but you probably can't tell at some point because you know god he like he wipes the slate clean you know i'm not perfect but i'm just saying so anyway let me get my um thing so i can show you guys um what i wrote down about this dude and this is when i was still i was still kind of halfway like not i was not good but let me go get it and i'm ashy so don't mind me wrote because this guy literally reminded me of somebody else so i felt like it was a spirit thing i wrote and i wrote this when i was still um what is it i wrote this when i was still kind of like heavily sedated with medication and not thinking straight um which, what, what was crazy is my doctor kept upping my dosage even when I said, okay, like, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling better. You know, the dosage he was giving me would work. And he was like, oh, we're going to up it to 300 milligrams. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I said he was attracted to me. Kept talking about busting and taking his territory. Has a messianic complex thinks I'm better than him because of my upbringing. No boundaries, doesn't respect boundaries. Fearful of God and death. Thinks I act like a white girl and is mad because he doesn't understand why I would speak the way that I do. And then I wrote grievances down about the place that I was at. Um, but the reason that I wrote what I wrote down about this guy is because it's a similar spirit as the person that i met 
I actually met that person in St. Louis. But it was just crazy to me how, you know, you meet somebody here and then you go to a mental institution and you meet the exact same, like it was literally like their faces looked the same, except the one I met in the mental hospital might have been 20 years older than that person, but it was like the same spirit. And they they looked the same physically, like same skin tone and everything, just different, you know. Um, I wrote down incels, you know, um, incels, like the men who, um, they're on like discourse. What's it called? Discord and and what's the other one? Um, Discord and I can't remember what the other one is called. I think it's like whatever. It's one of those popular forum websites that people be going on, and you, I'll probably remember it after I post this. But um, I wrote incels, alpha MGTOW, MGTOW men who hate women. They murder them, people they hate. <laughs> I don't know what I was writing. But yeah, I met a guy like that and it was like God was showing me the spirit and how like people can have the, that same spirit and how like that spirit kind of has like guardianship over certain principalities because this guy just kept talking about a specific um street i think in dallas i don't remember what if it's a real street or not but he kept saying stop six stop six so i don't know and then i even felt weird because at one point he's talking about busting and i'm like but he keeps looking at me and it was making me feel like how I used to feel around the other person. So I was like, okay, like, that's the same spirit. It got to a point where I felt like God was spiritually training me because I talked to, like, it got to a point where he, the guy would talk for hours. Like, just talk and be saying the same thing. And it was like a religious spirit that was like trying to scare all of the people around him and it was like he was like he put himself on like the a god pedestal and he was just like constantly talking and he was talking like religious stuff and it was like scaring people into submission it even got to a point where i started confessing my sins to him because it was like building up that much like a spirit of fear so i remember i started uh he started getting on my nerves. So I just started talking to him. But I know, I feel like God was having me talk to the spirit, but I thought I was talking to him, but I was really talking to that spirit. Um, Ephesians six twelve. for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. It got to a point where I was telling him like, I just, at first I was kind of rude with it. Like, can you be quiet? Like, can you just be quiet? And I would say it and he would just get quiet. And then he would start talking again. And then I would be like, hey, nobody wants to hear that. Can you please stop doing that? Can you please stop talking? And then he would stop talking. And it was like every time that I stood up to it, he would stop talking. It was crazy to me because it was like, I was shocked. Cause I was just like, all I gotta do is say, be quiet. And it was like silence after hours of talking. It was to a point where the nurses were annoyed with it and they couldn't get him to shut up. So then every time I tell him to shut up, he stops talking. But what else was I gonna say? Um. Oh, I met a girl. She's real cool. And I hope one day she sees this. I don't know if she will, but if she does, praise god but um <laughs> so i met this girl and i remember she came in and she was like kind of like how i was when she came in like fearful and a little like shook but not as bad as i was when i came in and i remember 
what did she do she was um she just was fearful and i remember she started asking um i don't remember how the conversation started but i remember she started asking about the bible and she was asking me about god and kind of like my experiences with God and um, she was asking about Jesus and she was just asking stuff about the Bible and tell me why like my spirit I felt like my spirit was talking for me because it was to a point where like for 40 minutes this one day she just asked me what I knew about God and what I knew about the Bible and she was asking me my favorite biblical stories and I was just talking and I was just like this is God's love letter to us and this is God showing us like no matter how bad we mess up like he still loves us and that's how strong his love is and I was just going in and I remember at one point I was like it was to a point where like I noticed people were like their attention was being diverted from like where we were at and they're like listening to me just talk about the Bible and I was just like yeah and god loves us and he loves us so much and then she was talking about like oh i'm i'm scared that i'm gonna that this is gonna happen and i'm like oh well you can't that can't happen because um when when jesus came he brought grace and the law changed when jesus died for us we're no longer under the law like i just remember i was telling her all of this stuff and she was just like getting so like full spiritually and it was to a point where she was walking around reading her bible the whole time i was there she was worshiping and i just felt so good like and it's crazy how when i got out i didn't even think about that but it was like while i was in there i felt like i was ministering to people and um you know i did have some hiccups you know there was some hiccups because people <laughs> people be you know y'all think i'm crazy people be crazy for real but <laughs> it was just nice it was real nice to um get to be a part of somebody's experience like that not only that but there were student nurses that kept coming in and one of them i realized that I don't know if it was me who realized or if God just like brought it to my attention, but he wrote down like, I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, he wrote down in my folder um, how I could fast track to be a nurse and from what i see i could like i'm already halfway done okay so i was um three classes away two or three i don't really know it might be more now but i was two or three classes away from getting my associate's degree but i just never finished school when my mom died i didn't want to go anymore and i stopped going because i couldn't focus and so they came in and this nurse, like I started talking to him, this white guy with blue eyes and I, he was so like attractive. <laughs> That's funny, but he he was like talking to me and he was just like, oh, you know, like you could, um, if you go to school, you can get, you know, you can become a, a registered nurse. You just have to transfer your credits. And I was like, you know what? Like, that's a good idea and he just told me like he was just telling me like how to do it he wrote down the whole path and then i realized i work at a job that will pay my tuition to be a registered nurse not only that not only that i'm on a leave of absence right now by the way but not only that but i've already finished what i need to do i'm like three classes away from my degree to be a registered nurse. How how did God reveal my purpose to me within a mental institution? And I really, when I knew I wanted to help people in that way was when I saw 
that girl go from being scared and frigid and like just messed up in her head to worshiping God every single day in the confines of a mental hospital. Like I literally watched a guy punch a girl in her face. Like I watched the same guy had demon underwear on. They had Satan written on the board in permanent marker and they couldn't get it off because they needed acetone. I met this guy, oh my God. I, I didn't even tell you guys, I met this guy. He was really cool. Um, he's a really cool person. And um, I almost gave his name. I was on, I was about to say his name. I remember uh, I walked up to the table and he said, he just said like, he said something like make way, you know, there's a queen coming or something like that. He kept calling me a queen. <laughs> kept calling me a queen i was so i was taken aback i was like me you calling me a queen and he's like yeah uh women don't know like that they're queens and black women don't know and it just it touched my my whole spirit because he he started calling me he would call me a queen he was like he would take my tray like at lunch he would hand me my stuff and like take my tray and put it away and I was just like oh my god like <laughs> like Jesus there are really men out here who do stuff like that and it just it just put so much hope in my heart not even to mention when I came back to my apartment my <laughs> my neighbor I love her first off um she's like um she's really cool but um, I remember like a few weeks ago when she first moved in, I gave her some food because I had a bunch of excess food. So I just gave her like, you know, what I, you know, could give her. And, um, <laughs> you know, when I was in there, like I had some situations happen where my rent was late and I was trying to pay it, but I was in the hospital. So I paid it. It's paid now. Um, but I was out of commission for like two weeks. So, you know, your girl, your girl came back to an apartment that was, you know, lights cut off and everything. But, <laughs> but when I came back, I had like knocked on her door because I was like, I needed to charge my phone or like call somebody or something because like my power was off, which means my internet was off, which means you know i can't do anything and i need to get this figured out today whatever so i knocked on her door she didn't answer and then i went to the office and i talked to them i paid to have my energy turned back on and then i had to get rid of all my food that was bad and now you know i just went to the store and i bought more food um what was the point of saying all that oh she knocked on my door at like nine o'clock at night. I'm trying to be quiet because I just saw her walk in, in her apartment and I don't want her to be like, oh my God, my neighbor's talking about me. <laughs> but um, she knocks on my door at like nine o'clock and she's like, what happened with you? I saw the notice on your door, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I had like a mental health thing and I was in the hospital for 11 days and apparently they think I have bipolar disorder and she was like oh um yeah I noticed you weren't home and um and I got really worried and then she was like um <laughs> she was like but I know somebody who prays I know somebody who when she prays it works and she was like uh, you ain't you don't have bipolar disorder and she was like uh you just pray and you know god is gonna work that out i was like oh my god like <laughs> like people i don't even know are praying for me they care about me jesus it just made me feel so good not to mention i was freaking out while i was in the hospital thinking that my car got towed from subway and turns out there's two subways on the same street and my car was there the whole time nobody told it nobody said nothing about it praise god he just did so much he 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 revealed purpose he he 
revealed, like he showed me myself the power that I had through Jesus to use when somebody's terrorizing a whole community with this prin this principality is terrorizing this community, making everybody feel um, religious minded and and small, and then you could just come and tell them to go, and it goes like. Whew, that's a lot it's a lot so yeah thank you guys for listening if you got this far i mess with you i really do um and what else i'm about to go then i got i got for breeze and stuff off and yeah anyway <laughs> i'm gonna go eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and watch tony gaskins or somebody on youtube and spend some time reading my bible because i read my bible i was having to and they had they took my bible so i was all upset because i couldn't even use my own bible because it's hardcover and they don't let you have hardcover books so yeah i had to use the esv version which actually is really cool i made it to songs of solomon songs of songs in some places And I went to the Dollar Tree this morning. And I love these little things. So get stuff like this and write and, you know, like, make your life good writing, like, stuff down and write affirmations. And I learned coping mechanisms. But, yeah, I'm going to let y'all go. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. If you watched, if you didn't watch, I still love you. And, yeah, bye-bye.